All right, let's have a little chat. How did you make it this far in life, successfully operating heavy machinery like a toaster in a car while chugging that bitter bean juice every morning without knowing what it's actually doing to your brain? Today, I'll explain why caffeine doesn't actually give energy to you like you're five years old. And by the end of this, you'll finally understand that your beloved coffee is just a very convincing liar, and you'll know exactly why you crash so hard you consider napping under your desk. So, let's begin with your brain. Inside that very smart head of yours, there's a little chemical that gets mad all day long. For our purposes, we'll call this chemical the sleepy molecule. Your brain makes sleepy molecules every second that you're awake, and when you wake up, you have very few sleepy molecules floating around. But as you go through the day thinking hard thoughts, blinking, and just generally existing, you make more and more and more of them. Think of it like a bucket. All day long, your brain is slowly dripping sleepy molecules into your sleepy bucket. And when the bucket gets full, you feel tired. But it's your brain's way of saying, hey, you've been on your feet all day. It's time for pajamas and a nice long blink. It's a very simple, very effective system. More awake time means more sleepy molecules, which means more sleepiness. Easy, right? Now, these sleepy molecules can't just float around shouting about how tired you are. I mean, that would be chaotic. So instead, your brain has a special little parking spot for them. Let's call these parking spots the comfy chairs. When a sleepy molecule finds an empty comfy chair and sits down, it plugs in and sends a little message that says, time to slow down. And when enough sleepy molecules have found enough comfy chairs to sit in, your brain gets the message loud and clear. So it starts powering down, you start yawning, and you begin dreaming about your bed. The sleepy molecule sits in the comfy chair, and you get sleepy. This is the natural order of things. It's how your body knows that it's time to rest and recharge. It's a beautiful, elegant process designed to keep you from trying to operate on 0% battery. But then, you drink a cup of coffee, or a tea, or one of those fizzy drinks that tastes like battery acid and candy. And in comes our main character, caffeine. Caffeine is a trickster, a little con artist, a chemical shapeshifter. The most important thing you need to know about caffeine is that it looks almost exactly like a sleepy molecule. It's like the sleepy molecule's evil twin who wears a slightly different hat. Because it looks so similar, caffeine can fit perfectly into those comfy chairs that are meant for the sleepy molecules. It's like having the wrong key, but it still fits in the lock. So, you take a sip of your morning brew, and the caffeine travels through your body and makes a beeline for your brain. It gets there and sees all those lovely, empty, comfy chairs just waiting for the sleepy molecules that you've started making. But caffeine is a bit of a bully. It rushes in and starts taking all the seats. It sits down in a comfy chair, and then another, and then another. It doesn't actually do anything while it's there. It doesn't send a wake-up signal. It just sits there, taking up space. It is a professional loiterer. It blocks the parking spot. Now, your poor little sleepy molecules, which have been faithfully doing their job and accumulating, show up ready to sit down and deliver their sleepy message. But they can't. I mean, all the chairs are taken. Every single spot is occupied by a caffeine molecule that's just sitting there, humming to itself, doing nothing. So the sleepy molecules are left stranded around with nowhere to go. Your brain looks around, does a quick head count, and thinks, Well, this is strange. None of the comfy chairs have sleepy molecules in them. I guess that means we aren't tired at all. Full speed ahead. Let's learn a new language and clean out the garage. This is the entire trick. This is the secret. Caffeine doesn't give you energy. Let me say that again so it really sinks in. Caffeine does not give you energy. It's not like eating a banana or a sandwich, which your body breaks down into actual fuel. Caffeine is not fuel. It is a blocker. It's a chemical bodyguard standing in the front of the tired button so that your body can't press it. The feeling of being awake and alert isn't from some injection of new energy. It's the absence of feeling tired. You're just ignoring the fact that your sleepy bucket is getting fuller and fuller. You've basically just put earmuffs on your brain. And the sleepiness is definitely still there, shouting at you, but your brain can't hear it. What's more, when your brain notices that none of the sleepy signals are getting through, it gets a little worried. It thinks that the system is broken. So it does what any sensible, slightly panicked brain would do. It hits the emergency button. It releases its own natural stimulants, chemicals, that are supposed to be used for real fight-or-flight situations. And this is where that buzzy, jittery, I-can-conquer-the-world feeling comes from. It's your brain's backup power kicking in. So not only is caffeine blocking your tired signals, it's also tricking your brain into a state of mild panic. It's not giving you energy. 
It's making you burn through your own emergency energy reserves. You're borrowing energy from later. You're putting alertness on a credit card, and you know what happens with credit cards. Sooner or later, the bill comes due. Now, you might ask, what happens if you're a person who has coffee every single day? Well, your brain is incredibly smart, and it doesn't like being tricked. After a few days or weeks of caffeine blocking all the comfy chairs, your brain says, I see what's happening here. There aren't enough seats for my hardworking sleepy molecules. So it does something amazing. It builds more comfy chairs. It literally creates new parking spots in your brain, hoping that maybe, just maybe, a few of the sleepy molecules can finally find a place to sit down. And this is what scientists call tolerance. At first, one cup of coffee was enough to block all of your comfy chairs and make you feel wide awake. But now, your brain has doubled the number of chairs. That one cup of coffee only blocks about half of them, and the other half are still open, and the sleepy molecules can sit down, making you feel tired anyway. So what do you do? Well, you have a second cup of coffee, of course. Now you have enough caffeine to block out all the new chairs as well. And then your brain, never the diligent construction worker, builds even more chairs. And then you need more coffee. You're now in a silent, invisible arms race against your own brain. It's this ridiculous cycle where you keep drinking more and more of the stuff just to feel normal, just so you can get back to the starting line. But sooner or later, the caffeine has to leave. Your body will eventually process it and wash it away. The caffeine molecules then get up from the comfy chairs and head for the exit. But what do they leave behind? Well, a whole bunch of empty chairs. And who's been waiting patiently this whole time, growing in number every single minute? That's right, your sleepy molecules. For the last several hours, while caffeine was hogging up all the seats, the sleepy molecules have been multiplying. They've formed a line, a very long, very grumpy line. And the moment that the caffeine leaves and the chairs open up, a tidal wave of every sleepy molecule that you've made all day rushes in at once. It's a flood. Every single comfy chair, including all the extra ones that your brain built, gets filled instantly. Your brain is suddenly hit with an overwhelming tsunami-sized signal that says, Sleep! Now! And this, my friend, is the caffeine crash. It's not because you ran out of energy. It's because you're finally feeling all the accumulated sleepiness from the entire day all at once. You were supposed to feel a gentle slope in tiredness, but thanks to caffeine, you just fell off a cliff. The bill has come due, and it has interest. And what about if you try to quit? Well, let's just say you've been a three-cup-a-day person for years. I mean, your brain has dutifully built a huge stadium full of comfy chairs to compensate. Then one day you simply decide, no more. You don't drink any coffee. And what happens? Well, you go through your day making your normal amount of sleepy molecules. But now, they wander into your brain and find a near-infinite number of empty chairs waiting for them. Even a small number of sleepy molecules can now make you feel overwhelmingly tired because there are so many places for them to sit and send their sleepy signals. Your brain gets way too many slow down messages and everything feels sluggish and foggy. Your blood vessels in your brain, which caffeine was helping to construct, also open up, which can cause a raging headache. And this is withdrawal. It's just your brain screaming in confusion because the chemical it's been building its whole day around has suddenly vanished. So, to recap for everyone who's still a little bit sleepy, let's go over it one more time. Caffeine is not energy. It's a disguise. It's a little molecule that dresses up like your brain's sleepy molecule and steals its parking spot. It doesn't give you any boost. It just blocks you from feeling tired. It's like putting a piece of cardboard over your car's low fuel light. The car isn't getting any more gas. You're just blissfully unaware that you're about to run out. The energy you feel is your brain having a small freak out, and the crash you feel later is hours of accumulated tiredness hitting you like a freight train made of pillows. So, remember this little story next time you're sipping your latte. Your brain makes sleepy stuff to tell you to rest, and caffeine is a big meanie that comes in and steals all the sleepy stuff's chairs so that your brain can't hear the message. This makes your brain think it's time for a party, but really it's just being tricked. Then, when the meanie caffeine leaves, all the sleepy stuff that was waiting outside rushes in at once, and you feel extra, extra sleepy. You see, you get it now. You're basically a tiny scientist who understands why your magical morning potion is actually just a master of deception. You understand tolerance, withdrawal, and that dreaded afternoon slump that feels like you've been hit by a pillow truck. The whole thing is just a clever chemical trick. A beautiful, delicious, wonderfully smelling trick. Now go on, enjoy your cup of delicious deception. You've earned it.